All right. Any questions to start with? Do you have any questions for me? It's just me and you today. All right. Uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of questions. Actually, it's just me and you. But, uh, they're, they're all just pertaining to practice. All right. Anyone else have any questions about anything? Okay. So let's talk about this. So this is generating, this is the sequence diagram that we were starting for printing out the report, yeah? So the assumption is that that other diagram uh, it must be this one, we'll bring that here So the assumption with this sequence, again, the sequence, an application, depending on the size of the application, may have dozens or even hundreds of sequence diagrams. Uh, they aren't supposed, no single diagram is supposed to encapsulate how the entire application runs. It's just um, supposed to capture one particular sequence when you're trying to ferret out what the various classes and member functions are and where the data should be and all that kind of stuff. So for this particular sequence, we are assuming that we have a depot and we are assuming that that depot has both a workers variable and an unassigned variable and both of those are vectors. So that would be this one here and this one here and inside of that vector are any number of employees in this case for our simple sequence that's one employee Bob is inside the workers vector and um, Bob also has a couple variables now there's uh, also some that I'm not putting here like the whoops like the name, uh, the employee's name and the employee's grade, that kind of information would be in here too. I'm mostly focusing on the relationships between the different class objects here. So the employee is going to have a tool uh, variable or tools if you choose to make it plural and that's a vector full of equipment. All right, And so Bob's tool would be this variable here and this variable contains the hammer. Uh, then this unassigned equipment I don't quite have enough I, I'm, I'm short on on rectangles. I probably need a rectangle here. This would be unassigned the unassigned vector and the unassigned has a shovel inside there. Uh, but if you're able to, to parse through how all these others are interacting, dealing with that vector of unassigned equipment is pretty trivial. If, once you understand the other stuff, uh, this stuff's easy. I should say the unassigned is easy. It's no different. So how do you print out a report? Somewhere, the way this sequence begins, is that there is a message sent to Depot saying, give me an assignment report, all right? And I'm going to erase this, but, and you don't normally, have this in a sequence diagram. Uh, this is just a, but what's kicking this whole thing off is there's a Depot object out there, and something outside a Depot, 
What is a good possibility for something outside of depot that would talk to depot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the main function, right? Inside of main, you're going to create a depot object. All this stuff gets read out of files into memory to get the setup that uh, we're describing right now. And then main is <coughs> invoking depot's assignment report function. So that's how this whole thing's kicked off, is something like that. So when you ask the depot object to please generate an assignment report, we know that in generating an assignment report, the first thing it needs to do is uh, spit out that report header. So there will be a number of cout statements to do that. And then I, I'm saying that here we're now going to have a for loop. And my question to you is, what is the first thing that is going to happen in the for loop? So if we generalize, we have to have all of the workers information printing out and all of the workers tools printing out. And then once all that's done, then we need to have all of the unassigned tools to be printed out, right? Just looking at that sample report should make that evident. But if I'm sitting inside a depot, I ask the question, what are the two things that depot can talk to? Looking at this, the next message either has to go to workers or it needs to go to unassigned because that's the only data inside a depot. So the unassigned part of the report is at the end of the report, so we don't need to deal with that now. It needs to deal with the unassigned vector. Now here is where it can get a little confusing. What is the thing that depot is going to say to its unassigned vector right here? What are the kinds of things that you can do with a vector? You can get its size. You can push back, put things on it, right? These are all just member functions. Uh, what is something else you can do with it? You, know, you, can, you can actually physically remove items from it, but in this case we don't want to remove items. Whoops, that's the unassigned. Oh, we do have the unassigned vector. Hang on. I got it. I said we were short a box. I didn't realize that I had that box right there. This is this vector, right? That's the one we're talking to. All right. Let me give you an easy, a vector, an easy question, an easier question. A vector is very much like an array, designed to look like an array. If I had an array full of 10 names, how would you print out those 10 names? Or 10 numbers, 10 grade point averages. How would you print out those 10 grade point averages? You'd use a for loop, yeah? Iterate. You would iterate. So the for loop is for iterating through that vector and how would you print out the first one? Yeah. Hmm? C out. No, you, you'd use C out, but you'd use the name, you'd use the name of the vector, my vector, and you'd use the square brackets, right? And the first one would be zero, the second one would be one. If you want to make it generic for every iteration, you would say the ith item is the one that you want to print out. Now this is the bit that's a little bit hard to get your head around. Th that use of square brackets, that's actually just a member function on a class. In fact, I'll, I'll show you just to let you know I'm not lying. Uh, let me see, vec code dot cpp. Let's include vector. Now I'm going to say vector of floats. Uh, my vec and I'll say my vec dot push back 3.14 2 .59, 7 right? and then I want to do a little uh, sanity check 
to make sure that I don't have any syntax errors before I go on. Said it again before many times. I'll say it again as many times as I'm able before the end of the semester. You need to be quitting out of your editor session and trying to compile stuff over and over and over again. Do not add a lot of code before you make sure what you have is right. Everything there is right. Oh, I guess I can run it. Uh, it prints out four, four items. So that, that's working as advertised. All right. So one way for me to get the... I'll leave that there. One way for me to get the third item is to do sub two. Since we're starting with zero, zero, one, two, that'd be the third item, which should be 7.68. Let's just confirm that that's indeed what I get. There it is. Okay. I, the reason I came to the text window here to enter some code was because I wanted to tell you that that square bracket accessing of the third element is actually you're just calling a member function. Now the way we call a member function is we use a dot, the name of the function in parentheses, yes? And then if, if that particular function requires some sort of input, you'd be putting that stuff there. Shall we try it? So when I say that, that when you're doing the square braces, that looks cool and nice and seems magical. Uh, the only reason we're allowed to do that is the creators of the language wanted us to be able to use vectors very naturally the way we're accustomed to using built-in arrays of things like you had in the C language and you have in C++, of course. But when it gets down to brass tacks, it's just a member function that someone wrote. And in fact, you can write you can write this exact member function for any of your classes. Um, we, our classes aren't any good example of why you would use it, but for your web counter, or your knight, or your weapon class, you could say, you know, my weapon dot, or not even the dot, my weapon, and use the square braces and shove a number in there, and it'll give you some value back. <clears throat> Uh, so it is, it's, a, it, it's kind of a wacky special member function, but it is one that you can write for any class, and it'll let you use this kind of magical notation. So the reason I'm taking you down this path of, of explaining that this is actually a member function is because it quite makes it easier for me to tell you maintain consistency with these sequence diagrams when I say that these are all just member function calls. So I'm not going to actually write out the word operator and put square braces and make it look like a function. I'm just going to use, use the square braces here, and I will, I'll just say this is getting the ith item. I could put a zero there. And when I ask the workers vector for the ith item, let's say i is zero, what does workers give back to me? So what is workers a vector of? Employee. So it has to give me back an employee. It has to give me back an employee. Exactly. And which employee in our sequence is it going to give me back? Bob. Bob. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and, and go have my return here. And this is a, a return statement. So I'm going to use the dashed lines, which means control is now returning back to depot here. And um, there's, there's no good way for me to notate that I'm being given Bob back. So I'm just going to, in parentheses here, say Bob is coming back. Okay? Yes? When it, when it asks for Bob, it's going to give you all the pieces of Bob, right? His name, his tools, and his bubble. Yes, it would be as if I if it would be as if I had a vector full of knights and I got one of the knights back. It would not only be the knight and all of that knight's data, but also that knight's weapon in hand. So here here's the interesting thing is even though there's nothing in this diagram that shows that depot is able to communicate with employee, right? Because it's the vector that has the tie to employee. Once I do this. As long as I've got a, a catcher's mitt here, which is, in all my years of teaching, this is my first time drawing a catcher's mitt, so 
Um, it, it's lo it looks a little like an oven mitt, I know. But as long as I have a catcher's mitt here to grab Bob when Bob comes back, then I'm able to take Bob and start talking to Bob. Yes? All right, let me talk to Bob. What, so their number, what do you want to say to Bob? Get off my lawn. Bob. So the catcher's mitt, you're, you're talking about that's uh, it'd be stored in the variable. Yeah, I'll show you a catcher's mitt. You want to see a catcher's mitt? Float F catcher's mitt. Oops, yikes. Let me, just, let me do this. Catcher mitt. Catcher, catcher mitt equals my vec sub 2. There we go. I just caught it. Now that I've caught it, I can do things with it. I can spit it to see out, or whatever it is I can add. This and Again, this is different from our problem, because these are just floating point numbers, right? So once I have my have the thing returned in my catcher's mitt, then I can add 3 to it, or 3.14 to it, or whatever, right? That's what I mean by the catcher's mitt. So are we getting back data, or do we want to just get the pointer, the address? You are given, it's a vector of workers, so you're getting back a worker. Now, one thing that I haven't talked about specifically, in actuality, you're dealing with pointers, and what you're getting back is a pointer to Bob. But for the sake of this discussion, it doesn't matter whether I have a pointer to Bob or Bob himself. The point is that I am now able to interact with Bob. So here I have Bob in my mitt. What am I going to do? What is the what what is what is the the whole goal here? Let's uh, let's see here. I mean, assignment to the report. Say that again. Assignment to the report. Like put it where he has to go and where the report. Right. The the, the, the ex exactly. So the the answer I'm looking for is we are trying to display an assignment report, right? And what is it that we're expecting to see at this portion of the report? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure I have that. If I do this, oops. I don't have that. Um, Okay, we'll copy that. I guess we can just open it right there. Here's the assignment report. I need to do have some sort of it. Now that I've got Bob in my catcher's mitt, I need to do some interaction with Bob such that basically all this stuff prints out. And I'm just having a terrible time highlighting here, but. Uh, last. There. <clears throat> Never ask a tablet to do the highlighting work for you when you can do it yourself. When I talk to Bob, that's what I want Bob to do. <clears throat> Let me make the question a little bit easier, marginally easier, by saying when I talk to Bob, this is what I want Bob to do. What can I tell Bob so that Bob will print that out? What did we ask the knight to do to get the knight to print out? It's yeah, it's display. Sure. Bob. Display. Okay. Now, in Bob's display function, we're going to see out name. Whoops. Name. Um, let's look at that report. Name, ID, and grade, right? See out name, ID, grade. And then what? And then maybe all these lines, right? Bob can handle that, yeah? So then there's going to be see out 
a bunch of da, 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 a bunch of those. Now what? What are these? What are these things here? Whose tools? Oh, let's go back to our diagram. Is Bob our employee? Is there anything in this diagram that shows that Bob, our employee, has a set of tools? Or has a, I shouldn't use the word set, has tools? Yes, it's this right here, right? This tool. So Bob has a variable called tool, which is a vector of equipment. So we don't know how many tools Bob has. Uh, so we need to create what? We need to create a rhymes with sloop. We have to create a loop. <laughs> Good. We make it a for loop. We say I want to iterate from zero to the number of items in tool, in Bob's tools. It's a vector, right? We can find out the size of that vector. In fact, so I, there, there's some stuff that I'm not doing here. So if I really wanted to beat this thing into the ground, what I would do is, uh, where's Bob's tool vector? Right there. What I would do here is, let me do it in a different color just so I, I'm not going to, well, I guess I can leave it here. I'm just getting a little bit cramped and, come on, my straight line isn't, there we go. So I'm writing over my other stuff a little bit. Hang on, I know exactly what to do. Watch this magic. I didn't go to 10 years of dry drawing school for nothing. So it, yeah, it's a little bit off because it's above my arrow there, but. How do I find out how many times I need to iterate through the loop? What do I have to ask the vector in order for me to know how many times to iterate through the loop? Size. Yeah, yeah, size. S-I-Z-E. Right, and then what I would do is I'd be coming back here. Yikes. Not sure why. There we go. Yeah, it could be a condition in the while loop. So here, this is a return, and then I'm going to do one of these. So normally, you are not going to go into this amount of detail in a sequence diagram, because the assumption is that everyone sitting around the table knows exactly how a for loop works, and they know exactly how you're figuring out how large, how many times you need to iterate through that for loop. All right? Uh, however, I, I just want to drive home as many different ways as possible what this sequence diagram is representing. So I ask the vector for how many items there are. It returns with some number here. Oops. Some number gets returned, and then I create my for loop. So now that I am starting in my for loop, who am I talking to and what am I asking? Everyone, everyone have their eye on the reason for all this. This is what we're doing, the highlighted stuff, yeah? How do I get the wrench to print out its inventory number and grade required? At this moment, with all I have here right now, Bob has no way of talking to, uh, not in this case, it's the hammer. We need to, for Bob to be able to talk to the hammer. How can Bob get the hammer? Call the hammer. Call the hammer. That's once you have the hammer, that's how you interact with the hammer. But how do you get the hammer in the first place? Remember, Bob doesn't have the hammer. See, there's nothing, there's nothing here that shows that the employee has the piece of equipment. Where is all the equipment? In the vector. So what do I have to, what kind of conversation do I have to have with the vector in order to get the hammer? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, have to have it spit out its contents. Did we have the depot? Does the depot have a vector? And did we have that depot cause its vector to spit out its contents? 
The answer is yes. I wouldn't use the, that phrasing precisely, but uh, right here, yeah. Vector, give me one of your things. Okay, here you go. Thanks, it's in my mitt now. Display. All right, so we're going to come over here. Vector, give me one of your things. Okay, and it's going to be the hammer. And then we can talk to the hammer. Display. Yeah. The display function is inside of the equipment class. This is this is equipment, yes? Yeah. This is employee. Right. This is an equipment object. This is an employee object. Okay. Um, Here's ah, darn it. So I don't have shift press down when I start drawing that it goes haywire on me. So now I would say what's being returned when I ask for the ith item, what's being returned is the hammer. Once I have the hammer and I won't bother, well, yeah, I will because I'm that silly. Right, here's my mitt. And inside of this mitt is the hammer. Now that I have the hammer, I can talk to the hammer and I'm going to, so now we get to suggestion we had early on which is by golly talk to that hammer and tell that hammer to display yourself and it's in a loop so if I've got if Bob has 30 tools and that loops gonna loop 30 times asking for each tool and turn from the vector and ask it to display. Probably the, the single biggest uh, semantic misunderstanding that people have is they set this stuff up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reproduce my results here. Here I have my for loop. And then what happens is Bob asks the vector to display. What is the assumption if I do that? Every solid arrowhead means what about this vertical line, the, about the box above the vertical line? Here's a solid arrowhead going to this. Here's a solid arrowhead going to this. What does this solid arrowhead mean for the employee class? It means that every employee has to have a display member function. This is a non sequitur. This is saying that every vector has a display function. No, vectors don't have display functions. They have things like size and the, the funky operator square braces and, and clear and all those other things that they have. All right, so the stuff down below is what you see frequently that is not correct. Yes? How do you make the uh, display function where you don't know how many, uh, many times it's going to be called? Because like in the night... How do, you, how do you write the display function if you don't know how many times it's going to be called? And then keep going. Uh, in the night uh, project, we would do like k1.display, k2.display. So we knew we were creating two vectors. <coughs> um, now... Your question is how do you how do you write how do you call the display function or how do you write the display function? Uh, I suppose call the display function. Okay, uh, right here, right here, I'm calling the display function, and that is looping on a vector, right? So you have no idea when you write this code, you have no idea how many times you're going to loop. You're just going to call the size function. It's going to give you a number like 300. 
because Bob can hold a lot of tools. And then this for loop is going to go 300 times, getting each of the 300 tools for 300 iterations, and then asking each tool as it receives it to display itself. Note that the display function itself has no concept that there's anything outside of itself. Just as the knight's display function, or even the weapon's display function, let's, uh, yeah, let's look at knight's display function. When you wrote the code for knight's display, it was something like, Uh, night colon colon display that's a void function and you say see out night colon name now there's nothing and I, I'm not going to continue with the rest of it but it's clear that you don't have the slightest idea how many nights are in the game when you write this yes and you don't care how many nights are in the game this is just saying if you have any given night and you ask that night to display itself this is the code that runs for that night Okay, so looking back at this diagram, this display function right here doesn't know or care about how many pieces of equipment are. This is just a display function for any single piece of equipment. And it'll, it'll be, it's this simple. It's this simple right here. It's a bunch of see out statements. And what do those see out statements need to look like? It needs to look like this line right here. So make sure there are a bunch of spaces before you print out I don't have it in my PDF. There are a bunch of spaces here before it prints out the name. That There are a bunch of spaces here before it prints out the inventory number. And then a bunch of spaces here before it prints out the grade required. Those are all attributes of the equipment, right? Three C out statements. Probably have some set widths in there to make sure they're printing in uh, fields, like in assignment 10. Other questions? We've got uh, a little over 10 minutes left. What I need you to start to get a grasp on, because the grasp was tenuous at best with the Joust project, is I need you to get a, a better grasp on how this diagram translates into code. So what I want you to do for five to seven minutes is I want you to get in groups of two or three or four, and I want you to write the display function for the employee class. Write the display function for the employee class. And we will get together in the final three to five minutes to work out what that kind of looks like, all right? Are coding what equipment gets assigned, or are we no. coding that from another file? Because I mean, there's no file for that, or are we supposed to get input? It's in the equipment. Or it's uh, what happens is you create the employees. Okay, okay. so you're just automatically you, you assigning create, everything that they're clear to you. Yeah, the the key thing is that after you read in all the employees, you sort the employee vector by rank. Yeah, by grade or whatever it's called, and then. Yeah. You keep you go through okay, the equipment dot text and you assign, assign until it can no longer be assigned. Then you go to the next person and then the third person. Okay. So yeah. Okay. I was wondering because if it's. I mean, it, it's you know to do it properly, you'd have some complex algorithm to be juggling things around to maximize assignments. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was, I was figuring it would be like there is assigned, the recording stuff that gets assigned over the day as a user, so they have a. Like a file or something. Oh, that right, that. right. No, no, it's, it's so supposed to be done so dynamically. Just, if they actually have the grade to use it, then you assume it gets assigned. Right. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs>
The red arrow pointing to deep post coming from main. So main creates a depot object, and then so it says like depot D, and then it's D dot assignment report or something like that, and that's what that red arrow is. Yikes. Why is my and it's just disappearing on me, and it's frustrating. Okay, very good. I'll bring these. 
Okay, thank you. All right, let's go ahead and <laughs> Let's go ahead and do this. <clears throat> Make sure we have enough time to bust it out. So we are writing a, this display function is pointing to Bob, who is an employee. So this display function is part of the employee class. So it's going to be employee, employees display function. We've done display functions before, so we know we generally don't pass them arguments. And also, although I haven't kind of done the end of this function, uh, we will use presumed knowledge from previous projects that the display function doesn't return anything. So it's void, right? We have the curly braces. Now we have to write the display function. So first we have the C out of the name ID and grade that comes from here, the name. So that the name's easy. That's probably just uh, you have to kind of figure out how big that field is, doing some counting. I do not know offhand how many characters that is between the N and basically from the beginning, Bob to the 8 and the ID, I'm going to say that's what, I don't know, 25. So I'm going to do C out, set width, 25, and then I'm going to print out the employee's name. And this assumes that we have uh, private data inside of employee called name, yes? All right. Next, we have to print out the ID. And that is in a field that's, say, I don't know, 18? I have no idea. C out, set width, 18, and that would be the employee ID. And then finally, the grade. C out, grade. And then that's the end of the line. And then I have a bunch of hashes here. I could I'd probably copy and paste that bit here. I don't know if it'll work. Let's try it. Yes, question. How come you didn't get a set width of the grade? Uh, because the grade, uh, what I did is I set width for, I'm going to do this below since the PDF is weird. I set the width for the ID, which was that much. Oh, wow. And so I then I don't need any extra buffing there. Yeah, so, so it's probably buggy, right? So I have to do something like that. And if I, I think it's, le is it left justified by default with names? Anyway, if you put it in there, it's not going to hurt anything, yeah? So I do that. You print out those. Now we need to do this bit. We can go back and look at our diagram. So that's what all this is. That's a C out. So here I'm calling size on the vector. What is the name of the vector? To know the name of the vector, we look at, ah, I have too much stuff up this thing. The name of the vector, where am I? The employee is tool. In my example is tool. So for tool, I'm going to say size. Tool dot size. Now I would use my cutesy little terminology that I need a catcher's mitt here. So I'll create a mitt. And now what am I going to do with the mitt? I've just done this in gray right here. Uh, put, it in the for loop. put it in a for loop. Excellent. For int i equals mitt. i is less than, or excuse me, z zero. Yeah? Does it have to be less than or equal to? Yeah, it's less than or equal to. Unless it's mid plus 
No, the, if I have three items, if I have three items in the vector, it's going to return three, and that'll be numbers oh, zero, one, one, and two. Zero, one, and two. Right. So it starts at zero less than mid. Now that we're in the for loop, what do I do? I've got to get a catcher's mitt. I do the sub i thingy. Again, the sub i is a message passed to, it is calling a member function of what? Bob's tools. Bob's tools. So it's going to be tool sub i. We need a catcher's mitt for it. Now this is the bit that we haven't gone into detail yet. <clears throat> now, I'm going to give you a little hint here that it's going to be a pointer ultimately. You're forgiven if you just do that. But we'll find when you're done implementing this thing, you have to be dealing with pointers because we're dealing with dynamic memory, which we haven't looked at the setup for this yet, which we'll do beginning of next week. Uh, so now that we, I, I think I need some curly braces here. Right? I've just done this call right here, sub i. What's come back is, in my example, hammer has come back. I've caught it in the mitt. Now what am I going to do with the thing that came back? Ask it to display. Oh, I'm sorry. I have this wrong. What should this be? I have this wrong. What, what, what is my... I'm not allocating memory. Everything's been set up. But I did my... The kind of catcher's mitt that I have here is wrong. What kind of thing am I catching? I'm not catching a string because I do not have a vector of strings. What is my vector full of? What is my vector of tools full of? Here it is. Vector of tools is full of? Equipment. Equipment, yes? So come back to my code. Equipment pointer. E I'll leave it as EMP. Well, no, EQP. Equipment pointer. Now I ask EQP to please display yourself. Yeah, so the, the equivalent is to dereference the pointer, then call dot. You have a problem with order of operations, so you have to put that in parentheses. This is identical to above. Either one of these. Uh, what's going to be preferred is line 11. Since everyone's walking out, let me give you the word of the day real quick. Again, and this early 1980s arcade game is Sinistar. 1982 by Williams. Oh, a classic. <laughs> Talks about uh, Cinnabombs. The whole, the whole description makes it so close to Cinnabon. It, uh, sounds, it sounds a lot hokier now than it did in 1982. I'll tell you that. It was good, solid gaming in 82. Now it's... Uh, <laughs>